Welcome back, and thank you for joining us. You know, SES co-founder Dr. Norman Geisler was truly a giant in the faith who got, whom God used to impact countless lives. Uh, in this episode, we're joined by Dr. David Geisler, Norm's son and president of Norm Geisler International Ministries, to discuss the new movie about Norm's life and impact called Norm Geisler Not Qualified. This movie features over 50 of the many he taught, mentored, or influenced to lead the church today by following the trail he blazed. And we'll also discuss how you can see the film and how you can bring the film to your church. I'm Adam Tucker with Southern Evangelical Seminary, and this is Why Do You Believe? Well, again, welcome back to another episode of Why Do You Believe, the podcast and live stream of Southern Evangelical Seminary and Bible College. I appreciate you joining us, and I do hope you will be sure to catch last week's episode with Dr. Brian Huffling as we examine some recent comments by Dr. William Lane Craig on his view of the nature of God. I think you'll find it uh, interesting and hopefully very informative. Uh, so be sure to check that out. And as always, uh, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, like this video, like our Facebook page, click the notifications so you know when we're going live. And you can also download the SES mobile app at ses.edu, uh, where you can find the audio from these live streams as uh, podcast episodes if you prefer to uh, interact with the content in that way. And you'll also find over 500 hours of free apologetics material, uh, most of which comes from our National Conference on Christian Apologetics from the last 10 plus, 20 plus years, uh, however much we have uploaded there uh, currently. So be sure to check that out at ses.edu. You can click on the media link on that website and uh, find out how to download the app. All right, if you watch our show, you know we like to start out with a fallacy of the week uh, each episode. Again, a fallacy just being a a bad way of thinking or uh, a bad way of arguing. So today's fallacy is called the anecdotal fallacy. The anecdotal fallacy. And this is when you rely on personal experience or isolated examples instead of relying on sound argumentation and good evidence. So I'll give you a few examples of this, and we're all guilty of this from from time to time. Uh, So someone may say something to the effect of, you know, I prayed and I prayed for a sign from God, but I never saw or felt anything. So Christianity must not be true. So they're basing everything on their personal experience or really lack thereof in this case, uh, instead of examining the evidence, looking at the arguments for the truthfulness of Christianity. Now, Christians also fall prey to this. Uh, How many times have you heard someone say, I prayed a prayer, I had this emotional experience, I was brought to tears, so Christianity must be true. That certainly doesn't make Christianity false, but that emotional experience alone also doesn't make Christianity true any more than uh, a burning in the bosom may uh, make Mormonism true for a Mormon who prays a prayer. Uh, Again, we have to look at the evidence. We have to look at the argument and not, or arguments, and not rely on simple, mere personal experience. Uh, You know, as far as uh, hot-button cultural issues, almost the entire narrative around police shootings currently is based on this fallacy, this anecdotal fallacy. So we're taking isolated incidents, anecdotal evidence, and building this entire narrative that really is contrary to reality when we examine the actual evidence and not just rely on anecdotal pieces of information or personal experience. So 
again, it, it's something we have to be on the lookout for and something uh, we want to be sure not to commit <laughs> ourselves. So let me get rid of that there. All right, so on to today's show. Let me switch shots here and bring in our guest. Dr. David Geisler, he's an SES alum, also an adjunct professor, as well as the president of Norm Geisler International Ministries. And he happens to be the son of Dr. Norman Geisler, SES co-founder. Uh, so, David, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be with you today, Adam. Uh, well, it's always a pleasure to, to get to chat with you and uh, we appreciate all the work you're doing with NGIM uh, and with SES. Uh, so again, thank you for being with us. And, uh, you know, we like to have a little bit of fun with our guests uh, before we jump into the actual content. Uh, and in honor of Thomas Aquinas, we call this segment On the Contrary. Okay. All right, so I've got 60 seconds on the clock, and uh, I'm going to ask you a series of either-or questions uh, that are really all logically fallacious because there are obviously more options, but uh, it's just more fun to do it this way. And uh, we'll, we'll learn about David Geisler just maybe a little bit more today. So you ready to go? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Coke. Good man. Good man. Uh, Krispy Kreme or Dunkin' Donuts? Krispy Kreme. All right. Nice. Nice. Uh, early riser or night owl? Early riser. How are you? Uh, I can't do that. Uh, let's see. Hot weather or cold weather? Hot weather. Okay. Well, you are in store for it this time of year. <laughs> uh, I always have to ask our guests this one. Printed books or e-books? Wow. Both. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I that's, a, there. <laughs> that's a hard one. That's a hard one. Uh, let's see. Um, contemporary worship or more traditional worship? Uh, contemporary. Okay. Nice. Nice. And Mac or PC? Mac. Mac. Good man. See, I knew I liked you. That's, that's a good answer. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for playing along with us. I appreciate that. And, uh, of course, we need to get down to uh, things that are a little more significant. Yeah. So we want to talk about this new movie uh, that you guys have produced called Norm Geisler, Not Qualified. So my first question, David, is why this title? Well, maybe some of your listeners know this. My father was practically illiterate um, all throughout high school. And uh, somehow when he, when he got saved, God called him to be a scholar. And he you know, wrote 105 books or something like that in his lifetime. But from all practical pur uh, purposes from, you know, just from the very beginning, if you were to look at his life, you'd say to yourself, how could God even use this, this man? And yet God used him in the life of so many people for a whole generation, basically. And it tells a story about his life and about the impact he had in his generation, um, but also tells an even more important story of how what he said actually has implications on what we as Christians ought to be doing today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important part of the story that we want to tell. Sure. Uh, yeah. It's so amazing and inspiring that God can use anyone that he chooses. Absolutely. And we're all not qualified. So that should bring us some comfort, I think. Absolutely. And, and certainly does for me because uh, I've never felt uh, qualified to do anything that the Lord has called me to do personally. But the key is I've been obedient to mm -hmm. do what he's called me to do. And I think, you know, God wants us to get to the point where we say, Lord, I'm willing to be used. And then he will equip us and so that we can be used in 
in ways that we may not even realize that we're capable of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you've given us a little taste of this, but what can people expect uh, when, when they see this new movie? When they see the movie, they'll basically see kind of like the storyline of his life, of, you know, how he started, you know, in poverty, basically, and illiteracy, and yet how basically he got stumped by this uh, drunk on Skid Row when he started sharing his faith, and he realized that he needed to go back and get answers, and which led him on a 20-year journey of study. And um, he discovered Thomas Aquinas had a lot of the answers that he was looking for. And uh, so basically he brought um, kind of Catholic theology uh, and integrated it into Protestant thought. And then it tells the story of the implications of that, what happened as a result of him integrating uh, Aquinas's thought into Protestant thought, um, and 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 how it impacted the evangelical church uh, for the last part of the 20th century and the first part of the 21st century. So um, it's an important story, um, but not only an important story to tell about what happened. But many of the things that he talked about are things that if we are going to engage our culture today, <laughs> we need to get back on. You right. know, we need to understand that there are, are fundamental truths that need no explanation. And we need to help the church understand that when we're talking to people, they need to communicate in ways that we can build bridges with people. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a lot of the work you're doing with NGIM. And I, I do want to talk about that some uh, before we're done today. Uh, you know, one thing I appreciated so much learning from your dad and, and from SES in general is just being brave enough to hold on to truth wherever it's found, because all truth is God's truth. And if it's true, then we need to hold on to it. And I think that's a lot of what he did with the, the thought of Aquinas and taking those foundational philosophical principles and and applying them in an evangelical context. Exactly. And uh, in our movie, Dr. Ed Heinsohn, who is the former dean at Liberty University, uh, their school of theology, he makes uh, this important point. He says, in every generation, God raises up a handful of people like Norm Geisler to speak into the culture challenge the way we've been doing things and point ahead to how we could do better in the future. Much of what Norm Geisler wanted to say to the 20th century was really speaking to the 21st century mm. and needs to be heard today just as much as ever before. And that was just such a profound statement yeah. by Dr. Heinsohn. And uh, Dr. Heinsohn was actually one of the first students my father ever taught when he taught at Detroit Bible College, which became William Tyndale College. And then Dr. Heinsohn went on to become the dean at Liberty uh, School of Theology wow. and just retired a couple of years ago, but he still teaches there. But uh, uh, so there's all these people that my father has impacted, you know, people like um, William Lane Craig, Ravi Zacharias, Andy Stanley, um, John Ankerberg, um, all, all these different people. And, and now they're kind of carrying on that similar message mm -hmm. that faith and reason are not contradictory, uh, and, and, and teaching that to a new generation. And, and I think that's an important story that we need to be reminding people about that, that we need to help the church understand that we don't have to have this fideistic perspective right. that we don't um, just accept something just because the Bible teaches it, that we should understand what we believe and why we believe it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's interesting, I think, with this project that uh, you began this before your dad's passing. Uh, and so I'm yeah. curious 
what what was the inspiration behind putting your dad's story and the impact he's made into the medium specifically of film? Well, uh, one of the uh, former students at SES, D'Angelo Burst, uh, actually came to me one day and said, I think you should do a documentary on your dad's life. And the more I thought about it and the more I prayed about it, and I realized that God was in this. But the interesting thing, Adam, is that when I started to do these interviews about three and a half years ago, I had no idea how this movie would end up because I was thought I thought I was making a movie a documentary about his life as a kind of a you know a nice little story to talk about the impact he had but what I didn't even realize is how much of an impact he had on so many and how actually his actions helped change uh, history and especially as a regards to evangelicals, that the things that he did, uh, the International Council of Biblical Inerrancy, starting the Philosophical Association, um, uh, being a, a former president of Evangelical Theological Society, all these things that my father did played a incredible part in the story of evangelical Christianity for, for the last uh, century and first part of this century. And uh, I did not know uh, just how much of an impact he had on so many people and the impact that that's had on the church, the evangelical church. So uh, that was kind of a surprise to me. Um, the other surprise was I didn't realize it wasn't just what he said to people about truth but how he lived his life in front of other people had an also great impact on other uh, uh, people's li lives as well. Not just what he said, but how he lived his life. Uh, Adam, you know this, and my father, you know, put other people before himself. He cared about promoting other people, not himself. I remember, I don't know if I ever told you the story that uh, one day I noticed my dad was like writing uh, some information or putting some information into a book by a Christian apologist, a well-known Christian apologist. But I noticed he didn't have his name anywhere in the book. And I said, Dad, why did you do this? Because he didn't make any money on the book. He said, well, I just want to help this person write a better a book. <laughs> so... In my dad's thinking, it was more important that he help this Christian apologist develop a better book than actually getting money or getting any recognition for adding to this book. And that was kind of the way he was. Um, he was all about kind of helping you. How can I help your ministry? How can I help you to grow in your faith? Um and as you know, he co-authored a number of books with different people. Uh, and we talk about that in the movie. We talk about the role that he played, Norm Geisler, the mentor. Norm Geisler, uh, you know, in the area of discipleship. And then we also talked about Norm Geisler, the bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a section where you can see some of the debates he had with different people and you may know this, Adam, my dad had a photographic memory or almost a photographic memory. And so when he was debating someone and they tried to get away from what was taught in their books, mm -hmm. he would say, well, on page 45, you say, and then he would quote the, the <laughs> section that just contradicted what the person just said in the audience uh, in, in, in the debate. And it just blew everyone away. No one really ever really won a debate by, you know, with Norm Geisler. And and so you can understand how that kind of impacted me as well. Uh, as a child, I could never win a debate either. Even if I was right, I was still wrong. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, your your mom must be an absolute angel. A saint. A saint. Yeah. She's a saint. Yeah, That's amazing. So yeah. as far as I know, David, you've never set out to uh, make a 
feature length movie before. So what was the experience like doing this film? Well, so, okay. So for the last three and a half years, I just had the privilege of traveling the country. I sat down with Josh McDowell. I sat down with uh, Andy Stanley, you know, and just all these great Christian leaders and hearing their stories. And uh, it was just really an amazing experience for me because I learned so much about my father that I didn't know. For example, when I sat down with Ron Rhodes to do the interview with him, what I discovered is that the late John Walvard, who was the president of Dallas Theological Seminary, which is where my father taught um, uh, back in the mid 80s, that uh, he told Ron Rhodes that he hired Norm Geisler because he knows that conservative seminaries tend to drift theologically And he hired my father to ensure that that wouldn't happen at Dallas Theological Seminary. And I thought, oh, wow, you talk about Bulldog. You know, we have this section in the movie on Norm Geisler, the Bulldog. Um, He really played an important part within evangelical Christianity of keeping us centered on those important doctrines of the Christian faith that were accepted by, you know, the early church fathers all the way through the Reformation, especially what he said about the importance of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then only after the Reformation did people begin to have different perspectives about the Bible being the inspired word of God and then, you know, coming up with different language and all that. And if it weren't for his effort within the ICBI, um, you know, conference and all that they did there, I just wonder where would we be today? Mm -hmm. Would we be a strong evangelicals? They're they're starting to move, unfortunately, in the wrong direction. But I mean, he held the the evangelical community uh, to understand the importance of these doctrines uh, for many, many years, it's only the younger generation now that doesn't really understand. So we're really hoping this movie will also tell that important part of the story mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah there, there's nothing new under the sun, right? It's just <laughs> the same old battles over it and is. over and over and over. So. And, and we're having to fight them um, again. Yep. Um, but um, yeah, it's it, it was really important. And Josh McDowell, I think... Uh, one of the people that I interviewed uh, that just said some profound things, he said things like, if you let inerrancy slip, he said, then every major Christian doctrine will slip intellectually. Mm -hmm. And he said, you always got to have that spike in the ground that chained to the elephant's foot to keep the (laughs) elephant from going so uh, too far. And Mm -hmm. Josh McDowell really did a a great job in this movie of communicating the importance of what my dad did in terms of um, his work in defending the Bible and the importance of the inerrancy of scripture. Mm -hmm. So I was really excited when I got to interview Josh to hear just all the, you know, amazing things that he said. And here's the other thing about Josh that blew me away. Most people think, that Josh McDowell is a pure evidentialist. An evidentialist, as you know, is someone who believes that basically you don't have to do the first step. You can look at the evidence for the resurrection and it proves that Jesus Mm -hmm. is God. But Josh actually is not a pure evidentialist. He said, he said you, you, he said that Norm was good in the philosophical and he said he wasn't as good in the philosophical. So he spent all his time in the evidential apologetics, mm-hmm. but he said he realized the importance of the philosophical. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere in print. So yeah. for him to say that, I think it was really, so he was saying that he does agree that you need what we as classical apologists talk about is two-step apologetics, establish a worldview of theism and then use that lens to look at the evidence for the resurrection of mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. And he believes that. Nice. It's just that you would never have thought that, <laughs> you know, 
from yeah. talking uh, or, or reading any of Josh's books, it, except if you read um, the new evidence that demands a verdict. Okay. Because then he has a philosophical part uh, in the back of his book, and he talks about some of these things. Oh, nice. Good, good. So you've mentioned Josh, you've mentioned uh, Ron Rhodes and, and one or two others, but I know you interview a ton of people. So who are some of the, the other folks that are interviewed throughout the film? Okay. So, uh, Tony Evans, um, I, I, uh, Tony Evans is the, um, um, uh, African American pastor at Oak Cliff Bible fellowship, um, has been an important part of the faculty at Dallas seminary for many years and has a very, um, is one of the important uh, leader, African American leaders, I think, uh, evangelical African American leaders in the country. Um, there's uh, guys like Greg Coco. There's uh, Hugh Ross. Uh, just all the names are escaping me. But if you <laughs> go to our movie website, which is where you can also register to uh, get a ticket if you live in the Charlotte area and you want to be. Uh, I want to watch the movie on June 13th. You just go to normgeislerthemovie.com and you'll see the bios of all these people that we interviewed and some of the, some of the key talking points, some of the things that they said um, in our interviews with them. And then also you can see uh, where uh, these different movies are going to be shown. And the one in Charlotte, if you click on that, you can actually register and uh, and sign up. There's there's still time to sign up for the June 13th global premiere here uh, in Charlotte. I was going to say that that is the official premiere, correct? That is it. And then from that, we'll go. Our our goal is Adam is to go to all 50 states. Um, and so how we're using this movie, I should clarify. It's not just we're showing this movie. But you know, you know, my father's written over 105 specific books over the years, right? And we have developed these tools, uh, like uh, the bookmark of his 12 points. Uh, I wrote a book with him on conversational evangelism. And so we offer those resources for people. And we now have a CE app, just like in two weeks ago. So you can go to uh, um, Google Play or, or Apple and type in Norm Geisler International Ministries and get the free CE app. So when we show this movie, we're also going to let the churches know, here are some resources that you can use to not only better equip people um, in, in their faith, but also help people to know how to reach those in their circle of influence. Because... <laughs> The way things are going, I don't know what you believe, Adam, but it, it looks like the Lord may be returning sooner than we thought. Come quickly, so, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and so because of what's happening in our world today, it just seems to me that it's time to not only live like Norm Geisler said we we're supposed to live, but let's think in terms strategically, how do we reach the lost around us? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that you'll see in the movie is that my father had a real passion for reaching the lost. And uh, even like uh, Dr. Paige Patterson, former president of Southwestern, said that he, you know, caught my dad many times in the lobby um, uh, uh, talking to people about the Lord and witness, sharing uh, his witness uh, with them. And uh, that uh, he wasn't just all about apologetics, that the the apologetics that he learned, he used to help him, uh, be a more effective mm -hmm. witness. And I just think that, you know, it's time for all of us to learn how to be more effective in using all these great tools that Norm Geisler left us. And we're hoping that the movie will be the catalyst uh, once people see the movie, then they'll want to bring it to their own church. And if they're interested in doing this, they just have to email us at host at ngim.org. And then we'll send them some information about how they can host the movie in their church. 
and then all the resources uh, that we offer uh, churches online without us even having to go to mm -hmm. the church. Uh, you know, streaming has kind of changed everything, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> it sure has. <laughs> so. Yes, we are, we are grateful for the technology. And uh, again, we're talking to Dr. David Geisler, president of Norm Geisler International Ministries, about their new movie, Norm Geisler Not Qualified. And uh, as David said a moment ago, visit normgeislerthemovie.com and you can see all the details, uh, how to bring it to your church, how to attend the global premiere on June 13th in Charlotte, uh, and uh, all the information about the, the people that are interviewed and any other details you may need. So, David, um, I've seen just clips, and, and what I have seen mm -hmm. looks phenomenal. It looks like you guys have done a, a tremendous job, uh, just even from, uh, I'm a graphic designer by trade, so even, you know, just from a visual standpoint, looks it looks wonderful. Um, so what kind of feedback have you guys received thus far from those who have been able to, to screen the whole project? So, uh, okay, so there's only a couple of us have actually seen the movie, and that's all the people connected to NGIM. And uh, I will send you uh, a link so where, where we talk about uh, we do kind of a, a review of some of the things that we talked about in the movie I was hoping to have that uh, today but unfortunately we don't have that but um, from just the few that have already seen it uh, it's been very very positive in fact um, one of my former students uh, doctoral students is a, uh, a pastor in near portland oregon and they're actually going to be hosting the movie in a couple months and um you know his feedback uh was was really helpful i think um and uh one of the things that brian henson said that really was pretty funny is that he says well if my dad felt you know unqualified you know what what hope you know brian henson said you know <laughs> I, i'm certainly not qualified uh and I just thought it was pretty funny that uh, you know that my dad had this attitude that somehow he was unqualified <laughs> because you know in, in comparison to Norm Geisler, which one of us feels qualified no, for anything? Right? No doubt, no doubt and, about that. I don't even feel so, qualified to have these conversations, so uh, much yeah. less write books and all those sorts of things. So uh, that that's wonderful. So I'm going to switch to our last segment again, in honor okay. of Aquinas called I Answer That. And we'll get into, okay. uh, put you on the spot with a few specific uh, questions. All right. So I, uh, I imagine some of these questions will be impossible to answer, really, but... Uh, do you have a favorite story of how God has used your dad's work uh, to impact someone? I know there are many, but do you have a favorite one? I do, and I found out when I started um, filming for this movie. Oh, that's awesome. So what i haven't told the audience yet is there is a story within this story there was someone that my dad affected her life and we tell that story within this story and it it's going to blow you away when you find out so i don't want to tell it uh, <laughs> uh, ahead of time because i want them to go see the movie but it just blew me away when i realized what happened to this person, what happened, and the lives that they impacted, let's just say in another country, <laughs> um, that uh, I just thought, wow, what an amazing God that we have. Amen. That God would take my father, raise him up, and just, you know, we tell this tiny little story within the story of how he impacted one life, and that's impacted thousands of people's lives through this one individual. Now, just think how many of those kind of stories yeah. there are out there. 
but but that's my favorite story. So rather than telling you the details of it, I want to encourage everyone to see the movie because it will uh, it'll be really impactful. The other thing that was impactful, um, uh, I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but but it's impactful in the movie is. Uh, my father also tells a little bit of the story about my sister, Rhoda. You, you know, she committed suicide about mm. uh, 10 years ago. And so you see a little bit of the other side of Norm Geisler that mm. you don't normally get to see. And you get to see how he dealt with the problem of evil in mm. his own life and deal with difficult times. Um and so that's why I think it will appeal to not just people trained in apologetics, but people who are curious to know what apologetics is and to know how what we believe will impact how we live. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things I'm very uh, thankful that the movie is going to communicate, that it's important not only what we say to people, but how we live our lives. Uh, my dad has this great line uh, in the movie. He says, if we defend the gospel with our minds, but we betray the gospel with our lives, the greatest intellectual defense of the gospel will fall to the ground. Mm. And I just think it's so important for us as Christians to keep that in mind, that as we use apologetic tools, we need to look at our life. And I think this movie will help people to kind of reflect upon where they are in their walk with God and what it, what are the changes they need to make in their own life, not only to reach the loss around them, but also to help them, them to become a greater witness in their sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about that part as well. Yeah, uh, that's great. Uh, you know, I'm sure our favorite stories are going to change when yes. uh, we hear the stories we never heard once we uh, stand at the feet of Christ. So mm -hmm. I hope that's an encouragement for all of us that, you know, we never know the impact that, that we may be making positively or negatively, frankly, right. uh, on someone's life. And we may never know this side of heaven. So uh, that that's amazing. So what was the hardest part of making this film the hardest part the hardest part was telling um the story in detail that we need to to explain let me see if i can ex explain this in detail <laughs> um i know my father had an impact on people's lives what I, I didn't understand is how few people there were in my father's generation that stood where my father stood and did the things he did. And because of that, there wasn't enough momentum and our culture moved on. Mm -hmm. And we lost that impact. We, we got, you know, the Bible kicked out of the, our public schools, right? We got prayer kicked out of school. We had all these things happen between 1960 and 1990. Just think about all the court cases, mm -hmm. Supreme Court cases, and how people moved away from Christianity. So the hard part of telling the story is that we lost an opportunity because there weren't enough people like my father. But the good news is he left us all these resources and tools and we, as evangelical Christians, can make the decision to be a part of the solution to the problems in our culture and introduce back biblical principles. One of the things that my father says in the movie is, you know, bring, uh, get on our knees more, pray more. Mm. <laughs> you know, the church needs to repent. Uh, we need to, you know, of our complacency, mm -hmm. you know, we need to put Bible reading back into our family devotions um, with our children that we're raising. It's like we need to bring God back 
into the equa the evangelical equation, right? And uh, that's that was the hardest part of the movie is to help people understand that though my father did all these great things, there just weren't enough people like him. Mm -hmm. And our culture radically changed and they moved on. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really sad for me to think about this, to look back at what, what has happened in our culture from the 60s all the way to the present. Yeah. But, but we need to realize that since he's left all these tools and it's easier for us to pick them up because he just like spoon fed them to us, right? <laughs> Like, uh, you know so much, Adam, because of what you learned from Norm Geisler. And now when you teach other people, it's a lot easier than if you were to start from scratch Absolutely. and start, you know, start learning from uh, the original sources of Aquinas <laughs> and then try to integrate mm -hmm. that into uh, modern culture. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No so question. we've all benefited in, in great ways. Yeah. No yeah. question. No question. And that's a great question. So what's your, uh, I know you have many, and we've, we've touched on some of these already, but yeah. uh, what, what's your main goal for, for this film? Okay. So the whole idea is that um, my father taught the trifecta of apologetics, theology, and philosophy. We at NGIM are also committed to a new trifecta of apologetics, uh, evangelism, and discipleship, okay? And so we need, I think, to blend these two trifectas. Um, and so the goal is to use this movie to awaken the church, to help them to see that, yes, what Norm taught was important, but how we live our lives is just, if not more important than what it is that we're teaching people. Because if we don't, you know, if we don't live our lives in a certain kind of way, our impact is going to be stunted. And I think it's really important if we're living in the last days, right? If, if Christ is going to be coming soon, uh, then we need to be about the Lord's business mm -hmm. and communicating truth in a way that shows that our uh, lives um, are impacted by Christ, not just what we say, mm -hmm. but also how we live our lives. And, sure. uh, and I'm really hoping and praying that the movie will be a catalyst that the evangelical church will use to kind of awaken uh, the church to, you know, get busy Mm -hmm. Yeah, get busy. I'm sure you've heard my father, you know, say these kinds of things in the past that we need to, you know, get busy for the Lord. And um, I, I just, you know, echo that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we've mentioned the website, Norm Geisler, the uh, You can find out all the details. You can sign up uh, to get tickets. Or is there a cost for the tickets for the premiere? No, they're, 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 they're free for the premiere. Okay. Now, if people are interested in bringing the movie to their, uh, their church, yes. uh, get their leaders to send us an email, uh, host at NGIM.org. And we'll send kind of the packet of materials that we, um, that we have with the movie and then churches can decide do they want to use this? Do they want to use this? Or do they, you know, what is it that they want to do? Mm -hmm. And like, for, for example, at the premiere, those who go to the premiere, uh, actually, and, and we're, we're encouraging people to do this with all the movies, is we have a little um, uh, eight-page booklet that lists, you know, some of Norm Geisler's Geislerisms, you know, things <laughs> that my father said. And then we have it broken down into faith, and reason, um, the Bible, theology, different things in just simple terms that, you know, my father said things in very simple ways so that lay people can understand. Mm -hmm. And so we want to teach a new generation some of those things that my father was teaching uh, all of us uh, that have 
you know, studied apologetics and studied theology, but uh, simplified it. So, mm -hmm. and, and we're encouraging people to show the movie to, to use these little booklets then when they show the movie so that those who come to the movie can learn some of the normisms. Yeah. Um, and, and benefit from that. Nice. So nice. So again, yeah. that's Norm Geisler, the movie.com. And do you have plans to offer it for, uh, for streaming or anything like that? Well, uh, not this year, but okay. after this year, after the movie is out, then we'll, we'll start doing okay. streaming and, and probably selling DVDs and things like that. So people can have those things individually. But the whole idea this year is to get people to, you know, come to, you know, a, a, a church where they're inviting a whole bunch of lay of uh, leaders from the area to come. And then they can see about the movie and, and see about bringing the movie back to their mm -hmm. own churches. So we want to multiply the, the yep. movie this year. And then Absolutely. next year we'll start making that available. Yeah. Great, great. Again, that's Norm Geisler, the movie.com. And we actually have a uh, course coming up here in a week or two, uh, as of this recording anyway, uh, taught by Dr. Bill Roach, our mutual friend, on uh, your dad's work and, and his thinking uh, at the seminary. And you can visit ses.edu uh, to learn more about that. You can click on current students and you can see upcoming courses uh, and learn more about that. You can audit it. You can take it for credit. Uh, totally up to you. It's just one of our great thinkers courses. And this one is on uh, Dr. Norma Geisler. Well, and I already read his book. It is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. Bill's, Bill, book, Bill's book. Yes. And uh, Defending Evangelicalism. Mm -hmm. um, just did an amazing job of synthesizing some of the main things that my father taught. Um now it requires us to put on our thinking caps <laughs> to, to read anything by Bill, Bill Roach, because he's he's a deep thinker, but it's yes. good stuff. It really is. And he synthesizes well, you know, some of the main things uh, that my father taught and puts it in a context of uh, some of the movements within mm -hmm. evangelical Christianity. Yeah. So you can see where does Norm Geisler fit within the broader uh, evangelical yep. Yep. Uh, movement. And why it matters. Yep. And why it matters, yes. Yep. And we actually Very interviewed uh, Bill Roach on that subject, so you can check out uh, you can check out that interview on our YouTube channel or, again, ses.edu. You can download the mobile app and uh, listen to the podcast. Uh, so, David, as we close out here, uh, tell us a little bit about what NGIM is up to and, and how we can learn more about the overall work that you guys are doing. So you can go to our website, ngim.org, and our our goal is, um, uh, especially in partnership with this movie, we want to get as many uh, uh, free resources. Like uh, we want to get my dad's books translated into other languages and make available as eBooks. Uh, we want to uh, help people then from watching the movie and kind of more curious about uh, you know, learning about what Norm taught to learn more about the Institute uh, at Norm Geisler uh, Institute uh, on our webpage where people can take classes online. Okay. It's not seminary level. <laughs> this is just a lay level thing, mm -hmm. but um, to learn a lay version of some of this information that my father taught at a, a seminary or by uh, seminary level for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And so we're using the Norm Geisler Institute as a vehicle then for helping better equip lay Christians in churches all across uh, America and then eventually all across the world. So that's kind of our strategy. Fantastic. And again, that's NGIM, Norm Geisler International Ministries, NGIM.org. Uh, and you can learn all those details there and then normgeislerthemovie.com uh, for all the details about the upcoming film, uh, the June 13th premiere, and how you can bring it to your church as well. Well, well David, one more thing. Yes, please. 
Okay, one more thing. Um, uh, the premiere, we've got some uh, great uh, p uh, speakers that will be a part of our panel discussion after the movie for yes, about 30 yes. minutes. Uh, uh, um, uh, Pastor Derwin Gray, pastor of uh, Transformation uh, Church here, uh, author Frank Turek, uh, author of I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, and uh, of course, our uh, our provost, uh, uh, Dr. Richard Howe, mm -hmm. um, he'll be there, and then um, some some other people. And we'll talk about the movie, and we'll talk about what is it that we as an evangelical church need to do in light of some of the things that Norm Geisler was suggesting. So I would encourage people to be a part of that as well. Awesome. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. I totally forgot to uh, to <laughs> mention that as part of the premiere. So uh, yes. that would be a special treat for those that are able to be there. Well, David, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate the work uh, that you're doing, the work that you've done on this film and your team. And uh, thanks for taking some time to chat with us about it. Great to be with you, Adam. All right. We will uh, see you soon. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Well, again, that's Norm Geisler, themovie.com. If you want to learn more about uh, seeing the film at the June 13th premiere or bringing it uh, to your church, along with some of the free resources that they're offering. And if you are interested in uh, learning more about uh, the type of apologetics and theology and philosophy uh, that Norm was so good at synthesizing, uh, I would encourage you to check out Southern Evangelical Seminary and Bible College, whether you're looking for a certificate or a degree or even an audit. Uh, we offer all of the above, and you can do it uh, right from your living room or from your mobile device if you need to. Uh, we try to make it as convenient as possible. So I would encourage you to visit degrees.ses.edu slash podcast. You can download a free ebook to help you learn more about uh, what makes SES unique and uh, how we can equip you to proclaim the gospel, engage the culture, and defend the truth. And of course, again, this uh, content doesn't happen, and, and frankly, the school doesn't happen uh, without your support, whether that be prayerfully or financially. So please visit ses.edu to learn more about how we can partner together. As always, we call this show, Why Do You Believe? And the only reason to believe anything is because it's true. So please go share truth with someone today. Providing an integrated approach to theology, philosophy, and apologetics that will equip you to proclaim the gospel, engage the culture, and defend the truth. That's SES.